G'day, and welcome to Dice It Up Gaming. Don't mind me, I'm just setting up for a gameplay of Zombicide Under or Alive. But while we're here, let me explain a bit about what you see here. This is my table topper. Now it's in two sections for those small games. If you don't need a large section, you've got a small section. But if you've got bigger games or even a bigger table to handle it, snaps into place and you've got a larger one. And what snaps it into place is I've got eight magnets, four on this side and four on this side. So you've got a north and a south. And if you know your magnets, north always wants to go to south. So it snaps into place. That holds it together strong enough so that nobody can bump the table, give it a knock and it splits apart. It'll keep it together. So that way you're not gonna, you know, you're halfway through a game and if someone knocks it, you're not gonna have your bits fall through. But um, let's come down here and I'll show you down here. Now down here, I've got adjustable height levers here on the legs. That way, if your table's a bit wonky or even if you purchase some sort of wonky timber, you've got, um, you've got a bit of adjustment here for you so that um, you can level it out and your, your little bits aren't gonna just bounce around. But um, we're not here to talk about it. We're here to see how it was made. So while I'm setting up, I'll, um, I'll leave you to it and see what you think. I'll see you in a little bit. So what I did is I sat down and I drew up some plans. Now, they're not the best plans, but as long as they give me a bit of an idea of um, what size to cut and where to put it, that's what I went with. So now that the plans were drawn up, I went out there and got myself some timber. Now I did get this from a hardware store. So it did come with some barcode stickers on it and um, sat down and had to get the stickers off. And this one here really, really didn't want to come off. Sometimes they're easy to come off, sometimes they just don't want to. Now the sizes that I got was the one with the label that didn't want to come off. That was a 30 by 30 square. Now that one's so I can attach the feet to. And these ones here, these are what I'm going to do, make the framework out of. And this one's a 42 by 19. Now at least these ones came off pretty easy. So I finally got the stickers off and um, now we're up to cutting the length. And what I'm going to make is, is it's going to be a um, frame of 900 by 450. So what I'm doing here now is I'm just going to measure the width of 450 and make a um, scribe. I'm only going to do one of these ones because um, what I used to find in the past is if I measure, cut, measure, cut. A lot of the times I can be out here and there by about a mil and I can throw um, my square out. I'm just going to measure one and then go to my um, drop saw and set it up so I can um, cut them all at the same length. So let's get cracking. As I take my time and put my head in the way so you can't see what I'm doing, what I'm actually doing is lining up the, the mark that I drew on the 
the wood there and lined it up with the blade just to the right hand side of the blade. I'm about to move my backstop here, so um, cut all the lengths to the same size. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit over, because they're all going to be the same size, so they will fit. So I went and put my glasses on, my earmuffs, it's a bit noisy, you know, safety first. Probably should have had a dust mask on here, but it wasn't going to create much dust, but still I probably should have had one on. I just started cutting. Look how fast I can cut. Geez, it'd be nice if I could do that in real life. So let's talk a bit about maths. Uh, for my maths teachers out there, yes, I did listen. So um, what I'm gonna do is we need 900 for this table. So I've already cut two lengths at 450. So I need a 900 length. So what I'm gonna do is work on the thickness of the timber here. So they're 19 mil. It's gonna be two of those. So you got 19 by two, which will give you 38. And we're gonna to have to ni minus that from 900 to give our length that we cut. So that should give us a table length of 900. So now that um, that mass lesson is over, man, I don't know about you, but um, geez, that a bit heavy for me for that one. But, um, so now that that one's over, we'll start cutting the um, second length. So I've got all my lengths cut, I've set it out on the table just to double check, make sure I haven't um, ballsed anything up. It's looking pretty good, it's starting to take shape, it's a rectangle, so that's always a plus. It's time to move on to the next step. Before I go out and glue these bits together, I like to just give it a quick sand in the corners there, just in case I've got a bit of rough corners. I know I'm gonna get a um, better bond. Make sure I give them a real good sand. And I'll um, move on to gluing. Once I've done sanding, I'm just going to give the ends a, just a quick wipe so I can get rid of the fibres on it. That way I know um, I'm going to get a better bond with the glue. Now's the time to glue. Put a bit of glue on the ends here and use your finger to smooth it in. If people got better way to do it, then obviously do it the other way, do it, do it a better way. I tend to use my finger a lot. And I've got these clamps. These are my corner clamps. You get these, um, purchase these on, um, online through Carbotech. They're um, Wolfcraft. They're actually a pretty good clamp. You just clamp it in there and you'll square it up. It's got a um, flat surface on the top there, so you can push it down onto it to, to get it level. It makes things a little bit easier. But, um, you'll notice there I've got a rag underneath while I'm gluing. I 
I've kind of used this table for the entertaining on the barbecues out there, so I figured I may as, may as well put a rag under it, try not to get glue over it. Last thing um, a lot of people out there want while well, you're down there eating your dinner and there's a big blob of glue sitting on your table. Makes a, makes a bit of a talking point, I guess. So now that I've got the frame connected with my corner clamps there, um, what you can do now is you can leave it dry and get back to it later, but I haven't got the, um, the time to um, let it sit there and dry. So I just pull out my nail gun. If you haven't got a nail gun, you can whack a couple of nails in there with a hammer. But, um, I've got my nail gun here and give it a use. Just hopefully I'm not going to do it this way. As I sort of realise that um, if I miss, there's a chance I'm going to get my hand. So you'll notice I'll take it off the table and put it on the ground. Just in case. And I'll just whack a couple of nails in there and throw it back up so I can take the clamps off. So this is the frame attached, nails on it, so I don't have to worry about the, the glue to dry. So what I'm doing here is I'm a little bit concerned about the centre bit. I probably don't need it, but I'm just going to add a couple of beams in there just to just to have that bit of support. Um, you never know when when you might need to lay on it. I guess <laughs> probably don't need it. It's a bit of an overkill. Um, I put it on there just in case, just so I can stop the top from bowing a bit for bows. This way I can just nail it all in and I know it's going to be nice and flat. So I'll just fast forward this a bit. You don't need to see me cut these ones again. So what I've done is I've cut the lengths, placed them in here, I've measured in between so that they're evenly spaced. I'm using the same clamps as before, put some glue on it. I did um, sand the ends on it, so I've got a smooth end. And um, I'll put some nails in them again, so that way I can release the clamps and move on to the next stage. I do like these clamps. They really do work well. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to place some magnets inside the timber here. So I'd recommend to get some stronger magnets out there. These ones are pretty weak. I had to use four of them to get a bit of well, a bit of strength through the timber. And if you can use your imagination, what it's going to do is it's going to snap the two ends together and hold them together. So. Um, when you're playing the game, you're less likely to knock it apart. Now for the magnets, I had to go out there and make myself a, um, a little jig, so that way I can get the magnets 
in the right spot for all the ends. It's nothing worse if you put it in there and you're off a little bit and it just won't work too well. So this way, as you can see, put one that side, one that side, and then I can do backwards. So I marked forwards, um, forward and a backwards on it. So that way I can't get confused with it and hopefully it'll all line up. So I got my frame here, made my jig. So now I'm just gonna mark, put it in there and um, mark where the magnet's gonna go. But I, because the jig's made out of wood, I don't wanna drill through the jig because I know there's a good chance I'll, I'll widen the hole a little bit and then it's gonna put me off a bit. So that's why you can see I'm just using my hands, putting it in there and just marking it with the drill bit. Little um, little indent on the other side. I do this to both tops, so that's uh, 16 holes in in total. And, uh, just a little tip here, just to write a top, a T or top, or just to let you know on both of them which way's up and that way your jig's gonna always be in the right spot. As I um, explain here, just to let you know with the jig. And I'll show you that I've wrote top on it. And that way, again, I'm not gonna get confused where I put the jig, it should work. So now that I've marked where the magnet's going to go, what I'm going to do now is just do a pilot hole just to make it easier. Once again, just to stop that if it slips out. So the pilot holes are drilled and the next step I've got to do is drill the holes so I can put the magnets in. Now I didn't have a height adjust uh, height adjustment on it so I just drew a mark on the drill bit so I knew how, um, how deep to go. But um, by all means if you've got a better way to do this do it because I've got to do another 15 of these this way and it wasn't easy. So I've drilled the holes without having to go through so that's a plus. And, um, just gonna give it a quick sand before I move on to the next step. And the next step is putting the glue and the magnets in and putting a, um, a plug in it so they don't fall out. Oh, the sanding. Even though I say quick, it still took a little while. So what you're looking at now is my um, magnets. I've used super glue to keep them in the hole. And I'm just gonna plug the holes now with a bit of dowel that I brought. I'm just gonna add a fair bit of glue here and 
hopefully um, when I press the, the, the plugs in, I can squeeze them down into the gap. Just in case if the magnets do come loose. Hopefully the glue will fill up the gaps and they won't rattle around. And then I just wipe off the excess glue just to make it a little bit easier later on. So this is it, they're glued in, I've sanded them down, well I've cut them down flush and sanded it back, so they're nice and, nice and flush with the edge of the, um, the timber there. Quite pleased with the way it worked out. Sometimes you just got to celebrate that win. Can we go. Good thing I don't have a day job. Yeah, so that's enough of that. So the next thing um, I move on to is we need to attach the legs. So I've got a bit of dowel here for the legs, and this is for the leg support. Cut all this down to size. So, um, I'll get cracking. Let's get onto this. So, I've cut my leg supports. They're, um, so, that's what the legs are going to attach to. And I've also made myself a spacer. So, that way I can sit it in between the two magnets. So, when I do glue it, glue this and nail it. I'm not gonna shatter the magnets that are in there. And because my table here isn't flat, it's just a plastic fold up table. I'm just throwing some um, things underneath here so when I do glue it, I've just got a flat surface that I can put it to so it's not gonna protrude outside on the, the other end. So when I put my um, top on it, I'm gonna have a little bump on it and that way I don't have to sand it back. So if you got yourself a flat surface, by all means use that, because this wasn't a simple way of doing it. It was actually a pain in the butt, but it's all I had. So like I said, I'm just gonna clamp it on add a bit of glue and I'm going to use my nail gun again and that way I can um, smash through it. Now I'm going to move on to my legs. So I'm going to mark the height. This can be whatever height you choose to be. I'm aiming for an overall height of about 160. So I'm going to cut my legs at about 125. Hopefully this will give me the height of 160 overall. So um, let's get this over to the drop saw. So because I'm cutting these lengths at a short length, my stopper is not going to actually make it in there. So I'm just using a bit of scrap wood as my stopper. That way um, all my leg lengths are going to be the same height. It's 
just saves that um, that wonkiness later. You may as well get the table to the same height all round. It's going to be in a bit of strife later. So now we just need something to attach the legs to the base. So I'm going to use these nut inserts. I've drilled a hole, put a bit of tape on it so I got the right depth. And, uh, I'm just going to add a bit of super glue into the holes just so that it can hold it. And um, I'm going to screw them in. After this one, I just got to do another um, seven more. Okay, I'm going to do something different here. This is before you'd have a video show on with my voice as a voiceover. I figured I'd show you what we've done so far. What I've done is, that's the frame. I've got the center bits in here just to give it a bit more support. Don't know if you're going to need it, but I'm not too sure. And I've added these things in here. They're nice and flush. So when I put the board, the top bit on it, no bit's going to be raised up. So these are what the legs are going to be put on. I've got my little um, inserts in there. I just need to sand around here to uh, smooth that up a bit. Got the magnets inside here. Got the, um, the plugs, the Dell plugs that I put in. They're all glued in, sand back flush. Um, there is a hole here. I'm sort of going to work out what I'm going to do with that. I might fill it up with um, a bit of epoxy or something like that, make a little feature out of that. I'll see how I go on that. So essentially, so let me get that in frame. Essentially, that's it. So the next thing I'm going to be doing on it, I'm going to be attaching the legs. I'm going to, well, I'm going to make the legs, so I'm going to attach them. So what I'm doing, got myself a bit of dowel again. Um, got these here, they are, uh, what have we got, the hanger bolts, hanger bolts, yeah, hanger bolts, so they're M6, um, get them whatever size you want, all I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to have to drill a pilot hole in there, screw that in there, so I've got my drill bit here, a bit of tape on there, just adjust the height so I know how um, how deep I want to go. Don't want to go too deep on it. Don't know if it go a little bit deep on it. So I've got those. So um, again, I'll be drilling those. I'll show you show you that. That'll go in there, and that in there can attach onto there, which I'm hoping in there. So screw it in there have that like that and this will work for two two reasons it actually will work really well it will just give me a height adjustment as well so if it does get a bit rickety being pine it'll it will um, warp a little bit especially I've got a cooler in there so I am going to um, kind of seal it that might help it so but if it does warp a little bit this I can adjust and it'll make it sturdy your ground so um, Let's get back to it, eh? So 
So I've got the holes drilled in the legs and now I've just got to screw the hanger bolts in. Well, we just have a, a magic tape just roll by. Whoa. Oh no, no, it's the um, foreman laying around again. Gee, some people have some cushy jobs. Wish I was doing that. Instead I've got to do another seven more of these things. It's nothing worse when you um, when you have the boss watching you. you. Tend to make all the mistakes. You drop things. Do things slow. It's nothing worse. And sometimes things just don't want to work well. So I've got the legs, I've got them attached. What I'm going to do is show you how the magnets work. So there's magnets in there. I'm not sure if you can see that properly. But you can just see it snap in. So they're working good. Quite pleased with that. I give it the shake test. See? But really, if you've got friends around playing games and shaking the table that hard, you probably want to send them home. But, you know, I figured I'd just put it to the test, see if it works. And it does. Quite happy with that. Foreman decided to bring in the, the client. I want to check out my work. This guy's a perfectionist, so um, he really wanted to make sure it was good. He's paying good money for it. Not often I like the clients to pop around and have a look at it. But, like I said, it's paying good money. So I may as well do it. Well, I've got the thumbs up. I can continue on. So the next thing I've got to do is I've got to cut the top suit the base. So I'm going to cut it a little bit wider than the base and then I'm going to use a, um, a trim router to trim it up by using a, um, a flush, flush bit. So I'm measuring it here because I want to keep this at this off bit at a certain size because I want to make something else out of it. Where'd I go? Seems to have just disappeared. Oh no, there I am. It's been a smoke out break or something. Oh no, no. I know what's going on. Foreman's back. It's no time for break time when Foreman's here. We have a slave driver this Foreman. It's all about work. Go, go, go. So once we've measured it, I've secured it down to a um, bench here. Now I'm just going to cut it. It's sort of amazing that um, it gets a bit noisy and you're sort of doing a bit of dirty, dusty work. The bosses tend to disappear. So 
See, I could have could have brought out my table saw to cut this, but because I didn't need it to be exact the size, it's just quicker to use a circular saw. Just keep your hands out of the way. If you don't have a circular saw, you can use a jigsaw. Or if you feel energetic, use a hand saw. So now I'm just going to move on to gluing the top. Just going to wipe it down a bit, get rid of the dust. And, um, just going to lay the glue down. Try to put it all over all the bits of timber there, even the leg supports there. And that way, you throw it all on, and hopefully the glue will squish through everything where it needs to go. Now this is a handy tool, my nail gun. So glad I got this. It made makes life a little bit easier and quicker. So that way I can just nail it down. Super quick and get it over and done with. ran out of braid nails, so I had to reload it and off I go again. Once again, Foreman pops in to check my work, see how I'm traveling. Bit of a uh, perfectionist this Foreman is. Oh, well. Day. What a warm day. Whew. It's good to take a load off. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. Don't mind me. I'm just having a um, bit of a break while I'm waiting for stuff to dry. It tends to get that way a bit. It's, it's hobby, you know. The glue, gotta wait for the glue to dry. Got the varnish, gotta wait for the varnish. Stain, gotta wait for the stain. I tend to be waiting a lot of times here. So take a chance to sit down, relax, maybe even work out what your next step's gonna be. But, um, yeah, while we're here, I may as well um, talk about this baby. This is my nail gun, my braid nail actually. It's Ryobi, it's cordless. Plug your 18 volt in there. Now, um, this one's air technology. It's a lot of, some of them out there, probably a lot of them actually, you've got a cartridge you put in there and away you go. But this one's actually air. I don't know if there's any, any other companies out there that make them. It took me a little while to save up for this. It's not the cheapest out, it's probably, well, probably is about the cheapest out there actually. It still is quite dear. You know, I can go up to 19 mil, like from 19 to 65 mil. For those who are out there that work in the inches, what's that, three quarters to two and a half, I think it is. Could be wrong, don't hold me on that one. 
So um, I don't work in inches, so I tend to get that a bit wrong. It's got a couple of safety features on it. You know, you got a, there's a button here that you've got to press. You've got to hold that in. That's got to be pressed in and you pull the trigger and away you go. It's got a jam mechanism in there. It gets jammed, you can get it out. Just make sure you get the battery out of it first so you don't fire it into your fingers. This is, um, this has helped me out a lot actually. Before I used to have to use the hammer and nail and geez, I've whacked that a few times. And that one as well. I had to glue up and wait for it to dry and then hammer away. This is, this has saved me a fair bit. But, uh, yeah. Might as well just enjoy the day for a bit. It's gonna be hard to get back into it actually, sitting down and relaxing. But, um, might get a cold drink. It is a bit warm. I'll leave you to it and we'll get back to it. So the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my trim router to trim the top down. So what I'm gonna use is my flush router bit. Now if you can see there, there's a little roller on the bottom. That'll run along the work that I don't wanna cut and the top bit will obviously cut the the timber on top flush with your job below, hence flush route a bit I guess, It'll make my job a little bit easier. So this is my trim router, this one's Ryobi as well. I do have a uh, bigger router out there, it's, it's a Makita one. But, um, She's a big bulky one, that one. So I use this one here for the, just for the small jobs. It's been lightweight, easy to move around. No brainer, it works for me. I'm going to lift it up here and show you so we can see, um, see how close it gets. It's pretty flush, hence I guess the flush bit. So now that it's been trimmed up, so the next step I'm going to do is sand. And sand. This part here I wasn't going to do by hand, so I pulled out my um, detail sander and figured if I'm going to sand, I may as well get a, um, a machine to help me with it. So I'm just trying to get it ready for uh, staining. I'm going to stain it next. So. Gotta sand it smooth. And more sanding. Still more sanding.
So now that I've finished this one, it's time to get on to the next one. Okay, let's talk about some of the sanders. Now, um, you did see me at the start there. I did use, use my hand and a um, sanding block. But if you can get out there, get yourself some electric sanders there. Uh, you can get cordless ones as well. But I got the electric ones. This one's here's your detail sander. Now this one's obviously, hence the name, detail. You probably want to do it for your small projects just to finish it all off. If you've got to sand down a fair bit, it'll take a long time doing this one. This one's just a finishing things off. Like I said, if you've got a fair bit to do, you want your orbital sander. That's what this one is. Now this one will hook into it. You know, if you've got a, I don't know, half a mil, not a half a mil, five mil or something like that, it needs to cut down. You whack on a lower grade sanding pad, 40, and um, you get down to it. This will do the job. It's a, so it spins and vibrates, so, you know, it gets to it. So that's for your bigger jobs. If you have any bigger, um, get yourself a belt sander, and that will really cut it down. I have got a belt sander, but this is a small project. I'm not using a belt sander on it. It'll just tear it up. But I did use this, and I did use this afterwards. Um, by all means, if you haven't got it, just use your hands. You just take a little bit longer, and your arms. I guess you'll build the muscles up in your arms. Yeah, so this is my orbital sander. It does have a variable speed on there. And um, my detail sander. All right, let's get back to it. I think I talked about this. Get a little bit out here and gets even closer into it. We're going to start worrying, wondering why I've got a lot of Ryobi tools here. I'm not sponsored by Ryobi, but um, you know, I got a good warranty on them. And I tend to divide the costs by the warranty. And these are outlived their warranty, they're past their warranty stage, so. If they crap themselves, it's um, looking to buy a new one. All right. Oh, I've got to get up now. Don't even know why I wanted to bend down here. It's a long way up. All right, got to get back to it. Oh. Before I start staining, I've just plugged up the holes where the um, legs are going to screw into. I just put a bolt in each of those holes just to make sure that uh, the stain doesn't drip through there and gunk up the thread. Then I'm just going to create another issue later on. So I figured I'd just whack some bolts in there and that way I don't have to deal with it later. Now normally when I put the stain on, I like to spray it. But it was raining outside so I couldn't get out there and spray it. And this is my garage that I'm working in. I can't really set up and spray stain everywhere through here. I'd have to put tarps down just to stop the stain from going everywhere. So I had to use a rag and sort of couldn't get into the corners. So I got out there and grabbed a brush. Now there's a reason why I like to spray the stain on instead of paint it on. I am no good at painting. I'm the first to put my hands up. Someone sits there and goes, Lane, you want to paint my house? So they go, geez, mate, you must be um, pretty desperate for me to paint your house. But the good thing about it is I'm going to do two coats. So if it comes up a bit ordinary, I can just sand, sand it back and put another coat on.
So this is the final coat. So right now, I've just got them resting there, waiting for them to dry. Now I'm not gonna do the top side of the table, because I'm gonna glue some felt onto that. So I didn't stain, a, st didn't stain on that side. So all I did was the sides where people are gonna see. And I did do underneath, as you can see, but I did that just to protect it a bit. But I think it's come up pretty good. So now we just gotta play the waiting game. Just gotta wait for the dry. Okay, while we're waiting for um, certain things to dry, I figured I might as well talk about some of the um, machines you've seen in the video here. This one here is my Ryobi. It's a sliding miter saw. Um, for those that don't know, what it does is, because it's able to slide, you're able to cut timber a little bit wider, or that still has that capability cutting down. It was the first, probably the second tool that I've brought. The first one was my um, circular saw. I sort of wish that I brought a table saw instead of this one. The table saw you can do a lot more with, but look, I don't regret buying it. But I, quite, I do have the table saw now, so I've got them both. So quite happy with this one. It does a 45 bevel. So I was cut on the 45 angle. Um, this was separate, didn't come with it. The stand, I don't have a table, so I had to buy a stand with it as well. Um, again, it allows you slide out to support your timber that you cut. Um, yeah, I've had to change the blades a couple of times. Uh, when I did buy it, I had to square it up. It wasn't square. So um, I took a bit of time and squared it all up and now my cuts are pretty good. So um, I went, um, before you ask, I'm not getting paid for this. I just figured I'd help a lot of people out because it can be quite an expensive hobby to get into. And uh, well, really any hobby can be quite expensive, couldn't it? But um, whatever you can save and what tools will do the job, I figured I'd um, help you out. So this is the Ryobi. Uh, it's about, it wasn't the cheapest on the market, but it's pretty close to being the cheapest. So um, yeah, I've had it for a few years and I'm hoping to still have it a few years, a few years more. So that's it. All right, we'll get back to it. Okay, so now we're onto my circular saw. This was actually one of the first tools Oh, first tools that, um, that I brought. So out there building, um, building my timber decking and fence. So I had to get out there and get a, got a circular saw. Probably should have got a drop saw, but couldn't afford a drop saw at the time. So I got myself a circular saw. And this one's Ryobi, ah, uh, not Ryobi, Izito, sorry. <laughs> get a bit confused with Ryobi. I tend to have a lot of Ryobi and Makita stuff. But this one's, a, this one's um, Izito. Look, probably about the cheapest on the market. It, um, I wouldn't trust a lot of their tools out there, but every now and then I got a hidden gem. This thing, I've had this for many years. It's probably about 12, 13 year old, and it still goes. It is a absolute gem. But, um, one thing about them, about circular saws I have seen a lot of people use, is when they get them, they tend to cut, just be mindful of the blade, it is shut. They tend to cut full blade. Now, you don't want to do that. You want to check the thickness of, your, of what you're cutting and um, have the blades just coming out. I don't have anything to show. Um, hang on. Yeah, use this. So, normally I've seen some people, they'll do that. You get a whole big blade coming through. You don't want to do that. Don't do that. That's just silly. So what you want to do, see, you don't want that much coming through. You want to adjust it up. 
see if we can get a bit closer there, just so the blade can come through. You're probably less likely to lose a digit and um, you get a bit more control out of that. It's not just going to rip through everything. So um, it's a tip for you, good safety tip there for you. And um, another one, keep your hands away from it. So this is, it's a beauty. So uh, it's my um, circular saw. All right, let's get to it. Okay, sounds a bit of a handy tip. We've got some legs there. We've got to, um, got to stain them, clear coat them. How are we gonna do that without it leaking every, leaking everywhere, Leak, leaking everywhere, bloody hell. Dripping everywhere. Let's put it on, um, or even touching it. You know, they're magnetized. You got a metal thing there, you hang them up. You can hang them anywhere. You know, I don't know if you can see that. It's hanging up there. That way I can paint them, do whatever I have. Holding this, sit up there, boom, voila. Done deal. You know, where is it? Oh, hang on. <laughs> you know. I'll buy the tip, boom, done, out of the way, and it can dry. Nothing's touching them, it's not resting on anything, it's not gonna fall. Hot tip, hot tip, it's a tip. All right, let's get back to it. Okay, so this is it, it's been stained. All I gotta do next is, I'm just gonna sand some of this here, if you can see, got a bit of, um, Bit of stain on the edges there. I'm going to sand that off to make it smooth because the whole idea of this is I want it smooth. And then um, I'm going to spray it, put a clear coat on it, a couple of, co couple of coats of that, and um, we'll get to the next step. So, uh, time to get sanding again. Well, lead me to it. So, I've got rid of the excess stain that was on top. I gave that a good sand down, and now I'm just going to put my clear coat on it. I'm going to do about four coats, just to make sure I get a, uh, a good protection on it. And I'm just going to give it a light sand between each coat. What I'm using here is my Azito air gun. I've had this for probably about six years now. It hasn't failed me yet. Okay, so I'm nearly up to the stage of putting this on. What I've done is it's been stained, got a clear varnish, uh, clear coat on it. Um, I'll put some resin in the holes so the holes are nice and smooth. I filled those up. The legs are on it. They're all good to go. So all I've got to do is glue this on. I put a bit of felt on. I'm gonna glue that on there. So um, let's get cracking. So this is where my arts and craft kick in. I was pretty good at that back in the day. So what you wanna do is make the felt a little bit bigger than your workpiece you can always trim it up later. You don't want to make it shorter. Or else you're just going to make a mess and create a headache. And it's just rinse and repeat for your second table.
So now that we've cut out the felt, the next step is we're going to be gluing. So you want to tape up your area that you don't want to glue because it is quite a pain to clean up. But, um, just don't tape the area up the way I'm doing it. It's probably the most awkwardest way I could have taped this up. Just embarrassing to watch. I think I would have learned by now. At least change it up a bit. Or secure it. Or do something better than what I'm doing. That's a better way to do it. For a minute there, I didn't think I'd um, realize and swap. Sort of makes me look like I know what I'm doing. Well, I did say sorta. Now we're ready to apply the glue. So what I'm using here is just a bit of spray adhesive. And I'm just gonna give it a good coat. Check out the wrist actions on that. Even swapped hands. And I'm just gonna do exactly the same with the felt. So what you wanna do is you wanna put a bit of glue on the timber and glue on the felt, especially with this spray adhesive. All right, so you're not gonna get a strong bond.
what I need here is just a little countdown clock. Just pretend a few minutes have just passed. You gotta let it um, let it dry for a few minutes before you put the two bits together. And this is where the magic happens. I just slap the two bits together. Because I made the felt that a little bit bigger than the tabletop, I was just able to put it straight down onto it. Before it dries, just get yourself a plastic um, paint scraper or anything firm that's plastic. You don't want to wreck it. Just give it a, um, a smooth over, get rid of all the bumps. And this way, if you apply just a little bit of pressure, you're, you're going to get a, uh, a closer bond as well. So you don't want to forget this process before it dries. Right, so you're just going to have one bumpy table. Smooth as a baby's bottom. And once finished, just put them somewhere safe to dry. And then once it's dry, we'll, um, we'll get to it and we'll trim it up. Now with trimming the felt, I like to use uh, scissors to do this, especially when I've got flat edges. I can use one side of the scissors that has a flat edge on it and I can cut real close to it. But by all means, you can use whatever you want to use, box cutter or Stanley knife, any which way you want to call them. You can even use your knife if it's sharp enough or if you're game enough. Pretty much or whatever you can find that's sharp, it's going to give you a clean edge. Essentially after this process, you're finished. 
It's just a matter of um, putting the legs back on and putting it on your table and having a game. Now this was an afterthought. I put some leveling feet on, attached them, just to give it a bit more height. And this is just to show you how um, you stop the wobble on it and how it works. Just a bit of a close up. To attach these, you just use the same process as attaching the legs to the leg support. Oh, you're back. I hope you enjoyed that video. As you can see, I've all set up here. It's for a two player game. And um, at least you can get to see it in, in action here. And if we come down, down under here, we've got where we can store our boxes and rule books, um, your miniatures, so they're all out of the way. So the, the height, not too bad of a height, but um, like I said, I am set up for a two-player game, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Happy gaming. Now, where is that second player? Maybe he's not going to be too far away. I haven't got all day. I'd like to get cracking and get um, get a game in. Be nice. Oh well. <sighs> I just had some practice rolls.